Hi everyone, today I'm gonna give you a very brief tutorial about how to control your uh, actually permanent magnet synchronous model using Solo and here I'm using an Arduino which is uh, acting as a unit which sends the commands to Solo. It's not really necessary to use Arduino, you can use any other controller like Raspberry Pi, even a simple potentiometer, anything that can generate a PW impulse or uh, analog output between 0 to 5 volt can command solo. You also can send the commands through UART, USB or CAN protocols. So in this tutorial I'm gonna work on the torque control of uh, permanent magnet synchronous motor or AC brushless motor which are the type of the brushless motors with sinusoidal uh, back EMF shape. And uh, I'm gonna show you today how easy it is and how can you send the commands to solo to increase or decrease the torque independently from the speed so uh, the very first thing is uh, <clears throat> you see the here i have uh, done a setup and uh, in this setup i have connected the arduino to uh, to my uh, solo with one wire which sends the pwm commands pwm uh, pulses here I'm trying to show you the concept of pulse width modulation in a very simple uh, form. As you can see, uh, we have a pulse here with a fixed frequency. The frequency is around 31 kilohertz. And uh, the pulses uh, will be varying in terms of the duty cycle. As you can see, it's going all the way up to 100% and coming back to 0%. And this is the the, the way that you can send the PWM pulses and commands to solo. So the increase of the, uh, the width or the duty cycle percentage is going to increase any phenomenon that you're controlling like speed or torque and the reduction of that will subsequently reduce it. This is the piece of code that uh, I'm using now for Arduino to generate PWM pulses. It's a very simple code and as you can see here and at this line is part of the code actually I'm setting the uh, the PWM frequencies uh, which is uh, anything about anything about 5 kilohertz will be fine so uh, on the other side in the loop I'm setting the the duty cycle of the uh, pulses based on the value I read from the analog input which is connected to the potentiometer here at this line and as you can see uh, all the values we read from the ADC unit they are between 0 to 1023 but the PWM pulse uh, width are uh, between 0 to 255 so I'm just mapping the value from 0 to 1023 into 0 to 255 which can be fed for the PWM unit at this line so you can see that I'm sending the duty cycle uh, through this uh, pin number three and uh, it's re related to the value of the analog input which we read from the potentiometer pulses coming from here they are having a fixed frequency around 30 kilohertz and the, the only thing we are changing to control uh, the torque increase or decrease is the duty cycle of the pwm and uh, through that, from 0% to 100%, you can go from no, no current in the motor to the maximum current. And uh, the current it's, we are talking and referring to is the quadrature current, which is exactly in a direct relationship with the torque generated. So if we consider an electrical motor like this, and we look at the shaft, only the shaft of the motor, so it's a bare motor without any load connected to its shaft, and if the motor rotates with the speed of omega in a counterclockwise direction like this, we can define some equations for the torque and its relation to the rotational inertia and ang angular acceleration. As you can see, the torque is equal to the rotational inertia multiplied to the angular acceleration. This is just the simplest form of explaining this and also in, um, in another form we can write the torque is equal to j dot omega dot 
which is uh, another expression for this term and the uh, omega dot is actually is the same angular acceleration but it's written in the form of derivative of the angular speed which is omega but what i'm seeking to explain here is when you are controlling the torque it means that you're gonna keep the torque constant so the first term on the left is going to be a constant value j which is, stands for the inertia and uh, depends on the mechanical design of the motor also will be something constant because it's the nature of the motor after it's produced and if we keep these two terms constant it means that the omega dot the angular acceleration will remain constant but what does that mean that means that we are gonna have a constant acceleration which means that we're going to end up in increasing the speed higher and higher and higher and it, it leads to infinite speed this is not something possible in nature and uh, we're not going to have infinite speed because the, first of all there would be other forces contributing in this there would be friction there would be other things and what we can learn from this simply is if you you work with the torque control with a motor without any load on its shaft the least thing which which is gonna happen is the motor goes to a speed which is beyond its uh, nominal speed and probably it will go out of synchronization in three phase motors or it will go into a very bad a risky condition and maybe in DC motors but still this depends on the structure of the motor so the thing you need to know that for the torque control you need and you must have some load on the shaft of the motor because it doesn't make sense to to do the torque control to for example to control the speed of the shaft or something like that because that's totally useless but the place that you should use the torque control is to control it with other objects connected to the motor and then the contribution of the forces of other objects the inertia of the other objects will help you to do the force control do the torque control without going out of synchronization and having a theoretically infinite speed beside the theory here i'm going to show you how to start the system so i have provided a switch here which is on the path of the power and i'm gonna turn on and turn off solo with this switch it's always good to use something like this uh, when you're making your wiring just to avoid any uh, uh, misunderstanding or any issue so uh, when i turn on the switch the arduino will be also turned on through solo because solo provides a 5 volt 1 amps output which you can connect it to any kind of peripherals like arduino or a raspberry pi and when i do that you're going to be able to see a, a green light down here which indicates the correct connection of the power and also a blinking led here this led shows that the uh, solo is operating in a normal condition there is no error or anything like that and then uh, now the first thing you have to do is first i'm gonna tune the uh, the, the piano switch here so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna put solo in uh, closed loop mode, which you have to push down this bottom here, and you saw that the motor went into, went into a vibration, and that vibration was for identifying the parameters, it's just a very fast thing, and as long as the piano switch is down there, all the parameters will be saved and uh, you don't need to do this every time that you start solo because for example now I turn off and turn on the parameters are uh, the latest parameters that they were identified and they will be stored and they will be used next time so if you change your motor you have to push this bottom up and again down so now everything is okay uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is this motor particularly has a low inductance and it's a type of a, almost a fast type of motors so for low inductance motors anything below 800 micro henry uh, line to line inductance is better you select the 80 kilohertz of switching which it's in that case that you put all the the first two piano switch up so now the switching frequency is 80 kilohertz at the output just to control the motor Better. and 
about the Arduino side, now I'm gonna move this potentiometer in a clockwise or counterclockwise directions and through that action, Arduino in proportion to the position of the uh, potentiometer is gonna send different PWM pulses with different uh, 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 duty cycles. So when I increase the amount of uh, potentiometer value, the duty cycle will increase, which means that the torque will increase. And when I reduce that, the duty cycle will decrease, which means that the uh, torque will decrease. So just let's have a very short preview of what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna increase and you see that the torque is reaching to a level that it's enough. So I'm applying now a very, very little amount of torque on the shaft of the motor. So I'm expecting that I can easily grab the shaft. This is not the safest way you can test this, but just to show you that this torque is so low that I can easily grab it because the duty cycle bandwidth, the duty cycle widths are uh, very short. So if I increase a little bit, it's gonna be much harder to grab the shaft. It's gonna resist and it's gonna uh, provide more torque. To explain you better the phenomena of torque control and how it can be related with speed control and all those things, I'm gonna show you a very nice plot of the torque and the speed of motor, the same motor I, I've shown you, which is a permanent magnet synchronous motor, AC brushless. And I'm gonna show you the, uh, the plots of torque and speed versus each other in real time. While the controller now is set on torque controller, I'm gonna fix a certain amount of torque. I'm gonna send it a certain amount of command. I'm gonna keep it constant, the torque command. So I'm expecting torque to remain the same value, but I'm gonna add some loads on the shaft of the motor during the testings and I'm going to show you what actually happens and what is a real torque control. So if you look at these plots, so on the top you can see the torque plot and on the bottom you can see the speed plot. This is the real time measurement of both of these things. I have scaled down the speed just for better visual uh, presentations. So now I'm going to run the whole system and I'm going to show you the real thing which is happening. So, if we go forward, you see that the torque starts to stabilize, starts to uh, go on and uh, it remains fixed for a certain amount of time. And then I start to add some load. Uh, the torque started to uh, stabilize around 0.04. This is the quadrature current actually, which is in direct relationship with the torque. You need just to multiply this value to a, a torque constant. So you see that now I'm applying some load on the shaft. The speed goes down because the load is much more than the previous load, but the torque remains the same. So uh, actually the reason this happens is because the torque when it's fixed, it can sustain a certain amount of load. And if you increase the load, which I'm doing now with my hand, the thing which will change is the speed of the motor because we are expecting the torque controller to keep the torque steady all the time. And you see that it's keeping it steady despite all the vibrations and everything. And this is a very, very fast plotting. It's sampling with almost uh, 20 kilohertz of sampling. So it's showing you a lot of details and actually this is the, uh, the real concept of torque control. As you can see in the, the, uh, this big plot all together, all the times that I have tried to reduce or increase the load, the effect is apparent on the speed side and the load and the torque side, the quadrature current remained the same all the time. This means that we are gonna have a fixed torque regardless of the load. If the load increases, the speed will decrease. If the speed uh, decreases, it means the load has increased and vice versa. So if you reduce the load on the shaft of the motor, despite the torque remains the same, you're gonna have higher speed. This is all physics and mechanics, but 
Here you can see it visually, which I think will uh, help you to understand it perfectly fine. So, you can now change this torque value to any value that you like, depending on the load applied on the shaft of the motor. And uh, you can control the torque of the motor independently of the speed. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel to stay tuned and support us.